Hi everyone. It's nice to see all of you back again on screen. Okay. Uh, before I move on, I would like to grab this opportunity to express my gratitude to our Mr. Patanish Balakrishnan and the entire Sudaruni Balayuri team for giving me this wonderful platform to share my insights with all of you. I would also like to take this opportunity to express my thank you to my beloved headmistress, Madam V. Ranbal, for her continuous guidance and support throughout the day. And of course, not forgetting my dear friends out there. All right, dear students, what are we going to learn today? Any idea? Yes, today I'm going to share you some things on punctuations. What are punctuations? By the end of the lesson today, you will know what are punctuations, how to use it, and what are the importance. Okay, contents for today. Let's look at the contents for today. Number one, why we use punctuations. Surely, before you learn something, you must know the reason for learning about it, right? All right. So, the first thing is why we use punctuations. Second, the types of punctuations. I'm going to introduce to you the types of punctuations that you are going to encounter in the future. Number three, the uses and examples. Okay, you need to know the uses of the punctuations and how to use it. Number four, common mistakes and tips to avoid. And finally, we are going to try out some activities. Okay, some questions which I've picked from the UPSR module. All right, let's look at the first slide. Why use capital letters and punctuations? Let me remind you, capital letters are also a part of punctuations. So, why use capital letters and punctuations? The first reason helps the reader better understand what is written. So, if there are no punctuations, you will not the exact meaning of what the text is telling you. Next, punctuations allows the author's writing to be easy to read and understandable for the reader. So when you read a text which has got correct punctuation, you will understand the text wholly and you'll get the meaning of the text. So when you use the punctuation wrongly, the meaning may not be accurate. Punctuation is very important in writing. Remember, in writing. Now when you talk, you don't uh, only you can you will only see the pause there. Okay, you don't say full stop, you don't say comma, you don't say semicolon, we don't say it out. Okay, the expression will show the punctuation. But in writing, it is not like that. In writing, you can see it's visible. All right? Missing or incorrect punctuation marks can make writing confusing for the reader. As I told you, if the punctuation marks are not used properly, you will get confused. Okay? You won't understand what exactly the text means. The text is trying to tell you. So that is the reason punctuation is very important. So when you write, you must also use it accurately. And before you use, you must know how to, you must learn about it. And that is what we're going to do today. Let's look at how to use punctuation to make your writing better. All right, let's go on the journey. Yes, I'm going to show you types of punctuation. The first one, the easy one, and the basic one, the full stop. 
the dot, the round dot, full stop. Second, comma. Can you see the comma there? Third, exclamation mark. Can you see the exclamation mark? All right. Let's go. Let's look at this one. Question mark. Apostrophe. Quotation mark. Yeah, the one in the red color there, that's a quotation mark cartoon. All right. Let's move on. Semicolon. And after that, the colon. And finally, capital letters. These are the main punctuations which you, are, you should know how to use. Of course, you have hyphen and dash. Okay, these are all very little things which I will show you in the session. All right. Now, the use of the punctuation marks and example sentences. So here in this session, I'm going to tell you, explain to you the use of each and every punctuation marks. Plus, I am going to share with you the example sentences, how it is used in the sentence. All right. Now, let's see the first one. Full stops. The black dot is called full stops. Let's see the usage of full stop. A full stop is a punctuation mark used at the end of a sentence or an abbreviation. So, when your sentence stops, you need to end it with a punctuation, a full stop. Or if you have an abbreviation, you use full stop. Don't worry. The next slide, I will show you the examples. Now, we just go through the usages. The second use, it's used to suggest that there is nothing more to say on a topic. So if you see a full stop, that means that's the end. Okay? For that sentence. That's the end for that sentence. Next, to mark the end of a declarative sentence. So when you make declarative sentence, it will end with a full stop. All right. Now we are going to look at the examples of full stop used in sentences. Yeah, here. This is an elephant. There's a full stop there, right? Sentence finish, idea is finished. It's an elephant, right? Okay, the next one. And is an excellent teacher. There is a full stop there. The sentence is completed, the idea is completed. The message that they wanted to convey is completed. So you end it with a full stop. All right? Look at the third sentence. Malaysia is a fascinating country. Okay? It's a declarative sentence. And I'm stopping. I'm stopping the idea there, right there. So I'm putting a full stop. I'm not continuing any further. I'm not going to give any explanation further regarding this sentence. So I end it with a Full stop. Are you clear? All right. Now let's jump into the next slide. The next mark, what is that? Yes, commas. Commas are very important, right? You always see commas everywhere, just like the full stop. Okay, now let's look at the usage of commas. A comma is a punctuation mark indicating a pause between parts of a sentence or separating items in a list. Okay, the pause. The pause means you stop for a while, very, very short time. Okay, a short stop between parts of a sentence. When you're speaking, when you're writing, to show a short stop, you use a comma. And you also use it to separate items in a list. We will see the example later. The next usage, 
a minute interval or difference of pitch. Yeah, as I told you, this the, it's something like the pause, the minute interval. That means the pause when you're talking or when you're writing after a sentence part, you just stop a very short moment and then you continue. So there you need to use a comma. And sometimes, most of the times, after the comma, the pitch of you talk, okay, your talking will be a bit different. You can sense a slight difference in the pitch. The next one, a slight break between different parts of a sentence. Okay, all of these are explaining the same thing. Okay, what he's trying to tell you is normally comma we use in parts of sentences. Okay, to show a minute interval, to show a slight break. Okay, but it is in the same sentence. Okay, the same sentence. The sentence has not ended. There is no full stop yet. But we are like stopping for just a very, very slight um, minutes or moment. That is where you use the comma. But after that, the idea or the message will continue in the same sentence. This is just a simple interval. All right. Okay, we can look at the example. Here, we were late, although it didn't matter. Number two, you will need eggs, butter, salt, and cheese. Okay, this is when you are listing items. Okay, when you list items, you use comma. Can you see? Eggs, butter, salt, and cheese. Okay, and number three, I wore a red colored long and frilly skirt. So you are explaining about your skirt. You're explaining, you're describing something, right? So the sentence is long, so that's where you use the comma to show the pause. I wore a red colored. There is three things in the skirt, right? It's red color, it's long, it's, and it's freely. So when you want to describe, you need to use the comma there. Okay, students? I'm sure, you're, I'm sure you can follow it. It's very simple. Now let's go on. Let's see what is the next punctuation mark that we're going to see. Yes. Exclamation marks. An exclamation mark is a punctuation mark. Can you see the mark is there? It's like one and dot. Okay. A punctuation mark usually used after an interjection or exclamation to indicate strong feelings or high volume shouting or to show emphasis, surprise, anger, and joy. Often marks the end of a sentence. A non question sentence beginning with what or how. So there are three points to ponder here. Okay, there are three things that you must know about exclamation mark. First, it's used after to indicate strong feelings. Okay, when you talk, simple actually, when you talk. Okay, when you are talking and suddenly you are, uh, your, your volume is rising. Okay, there is a difference in the pitch, right? And it is showing, is showing feelings like you want to emphasize something or you want to show your surprise or you want to show your anger or joy. Okay, at that moment, okay, your writing will need the exclamation mark. And normally, we will use it at the end, at the finals, just like no full stop or no question mark. We end it with an exclamation mark. And remember, when there are questions, there are sentences, it's not a question, but it begins with what or how. When this kind of things appears, you use the exclamation mark. So remember, exclamation mark is close to your feelings. So normally, when you're shouting, okay, on a high volume, or you're going to show that you're surprised 
or you are very happy or you are angry, it's going to end with an exclamation mark. It's simple to remember like that, isn't it? Right? Let's look at the examples. Yeah, here. Can you see? Don't pick that. You're giving a suggestion, right? You're telling not to do it. Don't pick that. Next one. Thank you, Sharon. And the last one. I hate you. So when you use, when you uh, use, when you speak, okay, when you say it as a dialogue, when you say it out, that you must, you should show a difference. You don't say, I hate you. I hate you is just a full stop. I hate you. You say it with full feelings. That's where you need the exclamation mark. That's not the don't pick that. Normally, how do you say not to do something, right? Don't pick that with the high pitch of voice, right? So when that in that situation, you need to use the exclamation mark. Okay? All right? Let's look at the next uh, mark, punctuation. Yes, question marks. Okay, what are question marks used and when? Question mark is a punctuation mark that indicates an interrogative clause. Okay, interrogative clause means asking something, interrogate. Okay, the word interrogate. Normally, the police will interrogate, right? Uh, yes. So, you ask when you want to know something, when you want to get information about something, that's when you interrogate. And when you interrogate, you need to use the question mark. It is used at the end of all direct questions. Okay, direct questions. Such as? What is your name? It's a direct question, right? Yes. Use a question mark after a question tag. Okay, a tag question. Okay. Okay, let's look at the example. Is this your assignment? It's a direct question, right? Where do you live? Direct question. Have you finished your homework? It's a direct question. Have you finished your homework? Okay, if it's a question tag, he finished his homework. Hasn't he? Okay, that's the question tag. Okay, that's different. I didn't write here, but that is how question tags sound. He has finished his homework. Hasn't he? Uh, there, you use a question mark. Okay. Okay, let's go on. Apostrophes. Yes, apostrophes. Why do we use apostrophes? An apostrophe is a punctuation mark used to indicate either possession or the omission of letters or numbers. So, apostrophe has got two functions. Okay, the first one, to show possession. Possession means belongs, your belonging. It's yours, right? You want to say that it's yours or it's someone else. So, you use the apostrophe. And at the same time, when you want to show the omission of letters, you also use the apostrophe. Now, let's look at the example. Okay, these are examples for apostrophe of possession. Okay, can, we, can you see apostrophe of possession? Okay, these are the examples. This is Betsy's scarf. Okay, the sentence shows that the scarf belongs to Betsy. And here... We are indicating that by using the apostrophe S. The second sentence, these are Peter's books. Here, we want to explain, we want to show that the books, all those books, all these books belong to Peter. So to show that, the, the apostrophe is used.
All right? Let's move on. Yes. This is apostrophe of contraction. Okay, contraction means the words, two or three words become one word. Okay, shorten. The words become shorten. Okay, look at the first one. Don't walk on the grass. If you don't use the apostrophe there, it will sound like this. Do not walk on the grass. So just to say the, the two words there, do not, we make it one, isn't it? We contract it, we make it shorter, right? So there we use apostrophe T, don't. Don't walk on the grass. Sentence number two. She can't do the task. Okay, here, the can't, okay? The can't, the word can't has been contracted. Actual word is cannot. She cannot do the task. So we make it short by using the apostrophe. Can't. Cannot becomes can't. She can't do the task. Number three, he won't come today. Okay, here, he, you can, if you don't contract it, you can write it, he will not come today or he would not come today, right? So we make it, we contract it and it sounds like this. He won't come today. Okay, are you clear students? Can you follow? No confusion? Don't worry. Let's move on. Yes, now we are going to look at the quotation marks. Okay, what are quotation marks? Yes. Can you see the quotation mark up there? Okay, what is it used for? The quotation mark is known as quotes, quote marks, inverted commas, or talking marks. So whatever you are going to talk, whatever you are going to say will be inside the quotation mark. Next. Quotation marks are placed either side of a word or phrase in order to identify it as a quotation, direct speech, or a literal title or name. Understand? So when you use the quotation mark, it's normally it will be quotes, okay? To show it's it, they are quotes, okay, or they yeah, are. Direct speech, what you're going to say, he said so and so on. So that will be inside the quotation mark. What he said will be inside the quotation mark. And of course, uh, sometimes for names and titles, okay, in a sentence, when you're writing a sentence, when you want to show, indicate the title or the name, we use quotation marks. Now we are going to see the examples. Here are the examples. Okay, remember, students, quotation marks are also known as speech marks. Okay, because it indicates your speech. So we also call it as, call them as speech marks. Okay, look at the first example. How are you? She asked me. So what she asked is in quotation mark. Okay, the question, the dialogue that she said, it's in the quotation mark. How are you? All right. Okay, number two, I don't want to eat dinner, said Judy. I don't want to eat dinner. Okay, that sentence, that speech is inside the quotation mark. What she said is inside the quotation mark. Okay, the one outside is who said it. Judy said it, right? So what Judy said is inside the quotation mark. And the last one, he told her, I don't know. So what he told her, we've indicated with the quotation mark. Yeah? All right. The next one is semicolon. What's a semicolon? Can you see? One full stop and followed by a comma. That's a semicolon, okay? Let's see what is the usage. 
commonly used to link two independent clauses that are closely related in thought. Don't worry, I know you're confused. It'll be much clearer when you look at the examples, okay? It joins two or more ideas in one sentence. Those ideas are then given equal rank. Okay, what is the meaning of given equal rank? It means it gi given equal importance, the same level of importance. Okay, the same level of importance. That's what is mean as equal rank. I know it, it might be quite confusing for you. It's okay. Let's run to the example. I think that will save you. Yeah. Let's look at that example. Look at the first one. On Tuesday, the train was late. The bus was early. Can you see? On Tuesday, the train was late. The bus was early. Actually, we could have joined the sentence. If we don't use the semicolon there, we can use the conjunction but. Isn't it? Here, the conjunction is not being used. So, we use, we replace it with the semicolon. I repeat, on Tuesday, the tram was late, the bus was early. It has got the meaning of the sentence, it has got the same idea, right? Same idea. It's about transport, but one being late and one being early. All right. Well, let's look at the next example, the longer sentence. You can go by an aeroplane, train, and a taxi. Okay, that's the first idea. Channel, tunnel, train, coach, then a short walk, or aeroplane and car. Can you see it's all it, it's all suggesting you how to go? Okay, all the three clause, okay, the three clauses are suggesting you the mode of transport that you are supposed to you could take to go to a certain destination, right? Uh, but it's giving you choices, either choice one or choice two or choice three. So either you go to the place by an aeroplane and then you take a train and a taxi or second choice, you take a channel tunnel train, coach, then a short walk and the third, and the third choice is aeroplane and car. So actually, the ideas are all interrelated, right? The same thing. So that is why you use the semicolon. Okay, students? So when you practice using it, you will understand it better. So no worries. All right? Okay, now let's see what is the next one. Yes, now is the colon. Just now semicolon, now colon. Two dots. Okay, two dots at same level. One up one down. This is a colon. Okay. A colon is a punctuation mark consisting of two equally sized dots placed on one above the other on the same vertical line. So it's on the same vertical line. You don't put one here and one left, one right. All right. It's the same vertical line. Okay. A colon is often precedes an explanation, a list, a quotation, or a block quotation. Introduce a dependent clause that helps to emphasize or illustrate the idea in the preceding clause. All right. To understand this explanation better, we should look at the example. Okay? Yeah. See. Look at the first sentence. We learned the following at the camp. Okay, can you see the column there? Rock climbing, canoeing, and crafting. Simple, right? We learn the following at the camp. So what you learn follows after the colon. So what they learn at the camp? Rock climbing, canoeing and rafting. The same idea, isn't it? It's just that it's giving 
further explanation about what they learned. First, the first sentence, they are telling that we learned the following at the camp. Okay, what did you learn at the camp? It's continued by after the column. Okay, number two. My instructor always says, okay, quote, what he says, ban those knees. And can you see what he says is always inside the quotation mark. Okay, but before that, you use the colon. All right. And the third one, the snow hardened. It turned into ice. Okay, we are actually, we are talking about the snow has hardened and we are giving extra information or describing about the snow being hard, right? So that's where it continues with the column. Okay? All right? Now, we are going to look at capital letters. Okay, remember students, capital letters are a big part of punctuation. So, it's very important to get your capital letters in your writing because that place, I mean, that determines your marks, okay? When you mark, when I mark the student's uh, tags, the capital letters is the main and the serious uh, thing that um, takes away your marks, okay? Because you must indicate the capital letter, okay? First, I will to explain to you where should capital letters be. Okay, we must see where it should be kept, where it should be written, where it should be stated. Okay, let's look at the rules first, okay? All right, first one, all sentences begin with capital letters. Remember that beginning must, must, must have capital letter. Okay, if you don't start with a capital letter, that means that's not a new Sentence, that means you're wrong. Your writing is wrong. Okay? Now, look at the example. We enjoyed reading the book. Right? So, the we, the W. The W is a serious thing. Okay? You students, when you write the W, sometimes the examiners, the teachers will get confused whether this is a capital W or it's a lowercase. But remember, normally lowercase... They don't have the sharp point down there, right? It's curved. So, so when it's uh, when it's uh, sharp curve, then it's sharp. That means it's a capital W. But don't write it small. Okay, in your single line, when you write in your lines, don't go and write the W at the same level of your other lower cases alphabets. Okay. Next one. The next rule. Proper nouns begin with capital letters. Remember, first you must know what are proper nouns. When you don't know what are proper nouns, then you won't know when to write the capital letters. So refresh. What's proper nouns? Names, names of people, names of places, names of your animal, your pet. When it has a name, they are proper nouns. So when you write your proper nouns, whether it is at the beginning or it is at the middle or final, all right? If it's a proper noun, so please start with a capital letter. For example, here, the word uncle, because uncle, it's because it's a beginning. So the U is capital. Rob, R, okay, the name. Rob is someone's name. So R should be capital. And then the Texas. Texas is a name, right? So, you also use capital. Texas. T is capital. Okay? All right. Okay, now let's go on. Let's see where else do we need capital letters. Yes. The pronoun I. So, remember, I is always capitalized. I, when you mean it as I. Okay, I. Pronoun I. You cannot use small i, whether it's in the middle. Even if it's in the middle, so still you have to use the capital I. Example, my aunt and I picked up the papers. 
Okay, can you see the I is in the middle, right? It's the fourth, it's the fifth letter in the fifth alphabet, right? Fifth letter in the sentence, but still, yet you have to use a capital I. Don't use small I just because it comes in the middle of a sentence. All right? Now, a capital letter begins the first, last, and any important word in the title of the book, magazine, song, movie, poem, or other work. So, when you are writing a title of a book, a title of anything, okay, just remember the name of the song, the name of the magazine, the name of a book. So, when any names, when anything to do with names, you use capital letter. You look at the example. Read the last chapter of Tom Sawyer. So the Tom, the T is capital. The Sawyer, the S is capital. All right? All right. Now let's see. Okay, these are some examples of capital letters in sentences. Can you see the examples? The first one. The bear in the zoo was a big one. So the T there. I've started with capital T. Why? Because it's the beginning of the sentence. Okay? Same. All these three sentences here shows the capital letters being used in the beginning of the sentence. Number two, cycling is a good form of exercise. So cycling is the first word. So the C should be capital. And the third sentence. His favorite pastime is reading mystery stories. All right. So the H is capital because it is the beginning alphabet. All right. Okay. Let's see the next slide. Okay. So now I'm going to show you 10 common punctuation mistakes and how to avoid them. Okay. So after... We see the mistakes. I'm also going to uh, share with you some points, okay, some tips how to avoid them. Okay, this is important when you do, when you're in your, when you do your writing, okay, writing. So it's quite common to make these mistakes sometimes without realizing it, you will make it right. So now I'm going to also show you the mistakes, okay, I'll highlight to you the mistakes and I'll also explain to you how to avoid them, all right? Are you with me? Shall we move on? Yes, very good. Let's have a look. Okay, number one. Okay, remember we've got 10 mistakes, right? Okay, I'm going to show you the first one. We're going to look at the first mistake. Extraneous apostrophes. Okay, what is extraneous apostrophes? Okay, first I explain to you the problem. Okay, the name sounds Extravaganza, right? Okay, let's see what is the problem about. People putting apostrophes where they don't belong. Okay, simple, right? It sounded so uh, serious, but actually the problem is very simple. People putting apostrophes where they don't belong. Okay, let's see the example. Only when I show you the example, you will know, yeah, I always do this, right? Okay, let's see the examples. And these examples, you see, I've stated the examples to avoid. That means cannot do. Don't do. Okay, what is that? It is all yours. Okay, here, you see, do you need the apostrophe S there? No, you don't need the apostrophe S there, right? You don't need, it's not showing belonging. It's showing, but it is, you don't have to put the apostrophe S there. Isn't it? This is, let's see how to avoid this. In this cases, you want the plural form of the word. So just add an S. You just want to show plural, right? So you don't need to put apostrophe S. You just write S. That's enough. Okay? Just write it. It is all yours. No need to put apostrophe S. Add an Add an apostrophe if you need the possessive form, such as 
this is my wife's car. Okay, here in this sentence, you need the apostrophe S because you want to show that it is my wife's car. Okay, it's someone's car. The car is my wife's belonging. So when you want to show the belonging, then you use the apostrophe. So remember, don't write like how I showed in front, on top there. It is all yours. Here, we don't need apostrophe. So when you don't need apostrophe, don't unnecessarily put apostrophe just because it looks nice. No, I'm just joking. Huh? Don't put unnecessarily apostrophes. Okay, remember, that's the first problem and the first mistake. Okay, so what's the next one? Number two. Unnecessary quotation marks. So you only use it when it is necessary. All right. Okay, see, look at the problem. The use of single or double quotation mark when nothing is being quoted. So remember, quotation marks are only for quotes when you're telling something. Okay, when you're telling something, a dialogue, a speech, only then you, you need to use quotation marks. Okay? Let's see the example to avoid. Okay. We offer the best price in town. And we end it with an exclamation mark, right? So before that, the quotation mark is really not necessary. Isn't it? We offer the best price in town. That's it enough with the quotation mark. Okay? You don't need to use the uh, inverted, the quotation mark there. How to avoid? If you're not quoting something, don't use single or double Quotation marks, instead use bold or italicized font. Okay, understand or not? When you're going, not going to quote, you just want to make it uh, important. Okay, when you want to make something sound important, you just bold it or use italicized font. That's enough. Okay, you don't have to, you don't have to quote it. You don't have to quote, you don't have to use the quotation mark. Can you follow? Okay, the next one, number three. Missing commas. Okay, this is also a problem. Okay, without commas, sentences can become run on blocks of text without any breaks. Okay, there is no breaks. So, you won't, you'll never get the meaning of the sentence. Let's see, yeah? let's see what should be avoided. Examples to avoid. I went to the store, but there were they were closed, so I went home. Can you see, it's just like a just like a chunk of you know words meaningless, right? So when I read, even when I read, when there is no comma, I don't pause. I went to the store, but they were closed, so I went home. So it's wrong, isn't it? It doesn't make sense, right? So how to avoid this? Speak the sentence aloud. And take note of any breaks in your speech. Insert commas when you pause or when you change gears within a sentence. So it depends on you. When you want to check, okay, when you're going to check whether your sentence is correct or not, or do you need a comma, you have to read it out. You have to say it out. Now, for I'm showing sure I show you now, okay? I went to the store, but they were closed. So I went home. You see, can you catch where I pause? If you can catch where I pause, then you will know where you need to put the comma. So you can try. Okay, you can try it later and you will know where your gears change. So when your gears change, that means it indicates that it needs a comma. All right. Okay, let's move on. Number four, yeah, now too many commas. Just now, no comma, right? Now, too many commas. Let's look at the problem. Just the opposite of missing commas, it's possible to include an excessive amount of commas in one sentence. So, these are common mistakes we do. Sometimes we don't put comma and sometimes we put too many commas. Okay, I'll show you the example. I went to the store, 
comma, but they were closed, comma, so I got in my car, comma, turned my radio on, comma, backed out, comma, and then went home. Yeah, even when you see it, you know it's something wrong, right? Yeah, isn't it? So you don't have to use so many commas in the sentence because you don't pause so many times, right? So how to avoid this mistake? Let's see. While there's no set rule for how many commas constitutes too many, your eyes are the best judge of overuse. Understand or not? So you check yourself. When you look at the sentence above just now, you yourself definitely can, you will, I know you will have a slight idea, something like, what is this? Uh, I think it's too many commas there, right? So then you're right. Don't worry, you're right. Okay, when you think it's too many, then it means there are, it is too many. So you judge for yourself. You should know where to put. So remember, don't, when the sentences are long, you must have commas, but make sure the number of commas is necessary. Understand? Okay, let's look at number five. Excess exclamation mark. The problem, too many exclamation points devalues each individual exclamation point. Okay, devalues means it doesn't give the weightage. Understand or not? Okay, let's see the example that's to be avoided. Okay, avoided, not followed. Huh? Remember, our products are the best. They really work. Get yours today. See, there are so many exclamation marks that you have to express it, right? When you have exclamation mark, that means you have to say it with expression, with feelings. So you can't do it. It's like, you know, too much, right? So how to avoid? Be tasteful with your exclamation mark points. Save them only for the big points and for the ends of paragraphs leaving the reader on a high note. So when you're going to, when you're writing too many things about something, your feelings, you don't go and show your feelings at every part, right? In a sentence, in your essay, you don't put your exclamation mark everywhere, isn't it? Only for certain important things that you really want to catch your examiner, uh, to express your extreme feelings, only at that point you put your exclamation mark, all right? You are the judge of your writing, remember? Okay, now let's move on to mistake number six. Yes, it's, okay, IT apostrophe S versus ITS. It's, they sound similar, but they are not same. When you say it, when you pronounce it, it sounds similar, right? So sometimes everyone gets confused. So the problem, it's, all too easy to misuse this word because its rules are different. Okay, now let's see the example to avoid. I don't know who it's going to hurt more, you or me. Look into its eyes. Okay, the IT apostrophe S and eyes. Can you see the sentence? Look into IT apostrophe S eyes. It's wrong, isn't it? Okay, how to avoid? Remember that IT apostrophe S, it's is short for it is or it has. It's a contraction where the apostrophe designates a contraction and isn't possessive. Understand? It is not possessive. It's contraction. It is shortened. If it's shortened, then you use the apostrophe S. Okay? Actually, you, when you can replace the IT apostrophe S with it is or it has, okay, if, if it's replaceable, then there should be an apostrophe. Okay, look at the next sentence. The dog lost its bone. It's possessive even though it doesn't contain an apostrophe. Okay, a simple test is to see if you, you can substitute the word with it is or it has, just like I explained just now. If it, the word there, the I-T apostrophe S can be replaced by it is or it has, then the I-T apostrophe S is correct. 
If it cannot be replaced, then you shouldn't use the apostrophe. Okay? Like the sentence just now. The dog lost its bone. It is not, it doesn't mean as it is or it has, right? Also, there shouldn't be an apostrophe. You only use the apostrophe S when it can be replaced with it is or it has. So just remember like that. Simple. Okay? Just remember like that. Okay, students, let's move on. Time is catching up. All right, number seven. The Oxford comma. Okay, what is the Oxford comma? The problem? The lack of a consistent method for using commas, actually. All right. Okay, let's see the example. Okay, example. What is an exam? What is an Oxford, Oxford comma? Okay, look here. My favorite foods, it's not foods, okay, food, are pizza, spaghetti, and steak. Example without an Oxford comma. My favorite food are pizza, spaghetti, and steak. So can you see the comma before the end? So that is an Oxford comma. How to avoid? There is no right or wrong when it comes to the Oxford comma. It's a matter of preference. So no problem. Okay. So the, don't it, you don't have to worry about that. This is just for your knowledge. All right. Number eight. Yes, I'm just giving you some extra information here. The usage of hyphen, and dash. The problem, all horizontal lines in text are not created equal. Good example of using a hyphen. Okay, when must you use a hyphen? The example there, our products are built with high-grade steel. When you use the word high-grade, can you see the... Dash there, uh, that's an hyphen. Okay, the word there, I mean the line there, the shorter line there is a hyphen. And now I'm showing you the example of dash. I prefer chocolate milk. See the dash? It's tastier than plain milk. But I really like strawberry milk. There's a dash there. Although the pink color bothers me. And then another dash there. Because the taste seems richer. How to avoid? Use a hyphen to combine two words to create a single idea. Compound word normally, right? Uh, so use a hyphen to combine two words to create a single idea. Use a dash to indicate that you are moving on to a separate idea or train of so it's very easy to remember. Normally, hyphen, they are shorter line. The line is very short, okay, compared to dash. Dash, the line's longer. All right? Okay, let's look at number nine. Semicolons versus colons. Okay, the problem. Semicolons are often misused, particularly where a colon should be used. This is quite common, right, to be confused. And it's understandable. All right, let's see how to avoid it. What we should avoid. I brought three things. You see, there's a semicolon there. A toothbrush, a blanket, and a pillow. So you should not use semicolon. Good example. I am glad to be going on vacation. I need the rest from work. Okay, here you need to use the semicolon. On top, no, because... It's actually, it's actually explaining what are the three things, right? There you use a colon. But by here, you're explaining the next step. When you explain the next step, the following step, here you use the semicolon. Understand? For colon, you are going to explain this, explain what you have said. Yes, the idea is still there. It doesn't go on, move on. When you're moving on, you use semicolon. Okay? How to avoid use, use a colon if you want to set a list of items. If you want to separate two related but distinct thoughts, use a semicolon. So clear, right? When you're using colon, you're listing. Okay, the ideas still linger on the same issue. When you use a semicolon, you're moving on. Your ideas are moving on. Okay? And let's look at the final mistake, number 10. 
quotation mark placement yes the problem sentence ending punctuation marks often go outside of quotation marks rather than inside which is where they belong okay look at the example to avoid i had a great day at work today then you have got your inverted comma and then your exclamation mark that is wrong the exclamation mark should be inside the quotation mark okay see the good example what time is it that's a question mark and then you use the quotation mark always make sure your uh, your punctuation is inside the quotation mark if it's a sentence the full stop should be inside the quotation mark don't place it outside the quotation mark okay all right so what are we going to look at next we are going to move on to the let's try to answer part okay all right choose the sentence with the correct punctuation okay this all these questions are from the upsr past year question modules okay so normally in your upsr question this is what you will get okay this is i mean this is to uh, strictly test on your punctuation okay strictly test your punctuation usage so normally they'll give you one question on this you are supposed to choose the correct sentence which is using the correct punctuation okay now children look at this number 1 my aunt's scarf is made from silk okay there is four choices there a b c d so which one is correct okay check which is correct which sentence is using the punctuation correctly okay are you ready all right so the answer is yes answer is a my aunt's scarf is made from silk very good number 1 answer is a okay let's look at question number 2 number 2 her father is going to kota kinabalu next saturday okay can you choose which sentence is using the punctuation correctly a b c d which is correct can you check make sure you check the make sure you check the uh, capital letter okay make sure you check the punctuation the full stop the comma okay can you can you can you choose the correct uh, sentence which is the one a b c d all right are you ready okay let's see the answer number 2 yes answer number 2 is b her father is going to kota kinabalu next saturday so you see the h is capital and then kota kinabalu it's a name of a place right all right kota kinabalu is a name of a place it has to be capital plus saturday saturday name of a day it has to be capital okay very good all right now let's have a look at number 3 number 3 when are you coming to my house okay i give you one moment this is the correct answer when are you coming to my it's a question remember yes so the answer is d when are you coming to my house ends with a question mark excellent okay number 4 help my sister is drowning said badrul all right okay take a moment there are exclamation mark okay there is inverted commas quotation mark comma so which is the correct one can you choose the correct one okay 
All right. Yes, the answer is D. Help. Okay, capital letter H. There's the exclamation mark. My sister is drowning. There is a comma. And there's close inverted commas. Say bedroll. It ends with the full stop. Excellent students. Very good. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Number five. Let's go to the waterfall tomorrow. Okay, so please choose the correct one. Come on. Try to refresh what I said and choose your answer. Yes. Answer is A. Let's go to the waterfall tomorrow. Okay, answer is, uh, this is a very simple, straightforward sentence, isn't it? Okay, the beginning starts with a capital and the sentence and with a full stop. Okay? Okay, number six. Look at number six. Durian, Langsat, Duku and Chiku are some of our local fruits. Okay, students. Think and see. There are so many commas. Where is it necessary? Look at the capital letters. Is it used correctly? Yes. So, the answer is A. Okay, durian, langsat, duku and chiku are some of our local fruits. Okay, can you see the full stop? Can you see the commas? Yes, very good. Number seven. May I see Mr. Raju, please? All right. All right, this is a question. May I see Mr. Raju, please? Remember, name of a person. So do you need a capital letter or not? Yes. Number Seven. Yes, this is the answer. May I see Mr. Raju, please? Okay, very good. All of you. Look at question number eight. Congratulations. You scored the highest mark for the English test. Okay, congratulations. So, there's the expression there. What do you need? Try to repeat. Which is the correct answer? Yes. B. Congratulations. You end, you, put, you end with the exclamation mark, right? You scored the highest mark for the English test. Okay. After the exclamation mark, you need a capital letter and it ends with a full stop. Okay. Very good. Let's look at number nine. Watch out, a motorcycle is coming towards you. Okay? Yes, which is the answer? Yes, answer is C. Watch out, there is an exclamation mark there. Continue by a capital letter A, isn't it? A motorcycle is coming towards you. So, answer is C. Okay, now we are going to look at the last question. Anisha puts her handbag, hat, watch and car key on the table. Alright, so which is the correct one? Make sure the final one should be the correct one. Yes, answer is C. Anisha puts her handbag hat, watch, and car key on the table. Excellent students, okay? I hope you understand and can follow the punctuation lesson today. If you need to re re have a look again, okay, you can go back and see view it again, right? So maybe you can take your own pace to go through the slides again. Okay, anyway, for today's session, very good. Well done. And let's meet again soon in the next session. Till then, 
stay home and stay safe. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.